Hey everybody, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about our nematodes. Nematodes are roundworms. Um, they have a complete digestive tract and most of our nematodes are free living. They can live in soil or in water. But there are a few that are considered parasites and those are the ones we're going to talk about. So the first is Scarus lumbricoides. This is the most common roundworm disease. <clears throat> Um, there are male and female round or ascaris worms. They can release up to 200,000 eggs every single day into the intestinal tract of the organism that they're in. <clears throat> um, they, the juveniles tend to cause damage by moving out of the intestinal tract and so they cause tissue damage to the, the organism. Whereas adults, um, they, they stay in the intestines, but they can block the intestines, cause blockages, and can cause all kinds of problems that way. So females, like I said, can lay up to 200,000 eggs daily, which um, would mean 73 million eggs yearly. And so when you see an individual that is infected with these worms, depending on the number of worms, if there's only one or two worms, they're probably not going to notice anything. But these worms will take the nutrients just like your flatworms. If you have a lot of worms in your system, though, then the worms are going to start moving. They're going to migrate. So if in the intestines they can't get enough nutrients, they're going to move around. And so here you see um, a child infected with these worms, um, and the worms are moving out the mouth, out the nasal. They will move out the anal cavity. They'll move around trying to find nutrients. The most commonly um, known nematode in the U.S. is Enterobius vermicularis. So this is the pinworm, causes enterobiasis, um, and it is a super common human parasite in the U.S., actually around the world. But um, So this worm lives in the large intestines. It is dioecious, so we have males and females. Um, they have intercourse, and then females will lay eggs. So um, this, these worms typically infect, or you see this mainly or most often in young children, in um, toddlers and preschool age children. And the reason for this is they like to play together. This is very um, this worm is very easily passed from one individual to another via um, direct contact. So let's talk about how the eggs are spread or how the worm is spread. Females at night, when the individual is sleeping, will crawl out of the anal region um, from the intestines, and they will then lay eggs around the anal. The anus. Um, children who are infected um, will often scratch their butt. That's one sign that you have pinworms is that your um, butt is very itchy. That does not mean if you have an itchy butt that you have pinworms, but that is a sign of pinworms. So, so the child will itch these eggs will get under their nails and um, they'll also get on the bedding. So then the child will um, potentially put their hand in their mouth or they might put their hand in their mom's mouth or in, on a toy and then the toy goes to another child. Um, you're talking about, you know, two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old. They are very um, handsy. Um, and this is how eggs are spread. The eggs are also super light. And so when they scratch their butt at night, the eggs can fall onto the bedding. And then when mom goes to make the bed in the morning and she's fluffing the sheets out, the eggs can move into the air and mom can just inhale it 
and get it into her system. So it's very commonly transmitted in households. Now the crazy thing is, is that this worm doesn't cause a lot of problems. I would suggest that this worm is actually a commensalist and not a parasite and that um, it doesn't really cause any super serious problems unless it gets into the wrong areas of the body. But it doesn't tend to, to do any real major harm except for causing a little bit of itching. And the itching is only seen in um, a small number of individuals. So not everyone has an itchy butt when they have this worm. So if you have these worms, only about 50% of the population that has these worms will even know that they have the worms because they don't cause any problems, like I said, um, which is where I get that commensalism from. But they're called parasites, so you know we, te we teach them in this class with this. Um, so this is the most common worm infection in the Midwest. Um, about 50% of the population has or has had um, this pinworm in their system. And they're named for their little pintail. And actually, um, quick interesting fact, this is what I studied, not Entrobius vermicularis, but I studied the cockroach pinworm because almost all animals have pinworms associated with them. Almost all, not all. The next worm is Nicator americanus. This is the hookworm. Hookworms are interesting as well. Um, hookworms will take about um, a small amount of our blood every single day. They, they drink our blood. So instead of just taking nutrients from the blood, they actually feed on our blood. Um, so one hookworm isn't going to cause a lot of problems, but when you have a lot of hookworms, that's where you get a lot of problems. Um, eggs, and that can cause severe anemia. Too many, right? Um, eggs are released in feces. The larvae hatch in soil. Um, the larva then will move and penetrate host skin. So if you walk around without shoes and socks on outside, they're going to uh, penetrate your skin. They get into your circulatory system. They move to your lungs. From the lungs, they'll then um, migrate up to the throat. And you know how you get that weird um, itchy feeling in your throat and you're like, <clears throat> and then you swallow? That's exactly what they do. They cause you to feel that weird feeling in your throat. So you kind of, <clears throat> and stuff, and then swallow. And when you swallow, it moves down into the intestines where it is now considered an adult and can reproduce. So here you can see the hookworm. Um, here, what, let's get on to the bottom. Eggs are released in the feces. Um, and so, again, these worms are more likely to be seen in countries where um, they don't have as good sanitary systems. Um, the eggs then can move to, and so I will say also, these can be found in other animals, so not just humans. The eggs then um, hatch. The larvae can move in the environment. They um, penetrate the skin. Once they get into the skin, they then are going to move into our blood. They move up through our circulatory system till they get to the lungs. They enter our lungs. They crawl up into our um, trachea, wait for us to cough because we have that uncomfortable feeling and then they get swallowed down into the intestines and that's when they are able to reproduce. Um, so I have four slides left on my nematodes. I'm going to finish it. So this will be a little bit longer than 10 minutes. Apologies. Um, Trichinella spiralis is our pork worm. This one causes trichinosis. Um, and so this is a parasite of organisms that are called omnivores. So humans, rats, pigs, um, any 
organisms that eat both meat and vegetables. The adults produce live young in the intestines and the juveniles can move into the bloodstream and get into our skeletal muscle. Um, and then the juveniles can be released in the intestines also. Or when the muscles are eaten, the juveniles can be released in the intestines. Um, humans are infected by eating undercooked pork typically. Um, trichinosis causes diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, um, and it's actually more common in Europe and the U.S. than other areas of the world. Okay, so here is the CDC life cycle. Here we have that encysted larva, and we're going to look at the human. Um, so say we eat that undercooked meat. So this worm gets into our system. The larvae are released in the small intestines. And they can then grow. You have male and female forms in the small intestine that can reproduce in the small intestines. Um, the larvae are going to hatch or they, they give birth to live young so they don't hatch. Um, the larvae that are produced can then move into the bloodstream and they can and cyst in different areas of the body, causing pain, muscle damage, um, all kinds of things. And then we have our filarial worms. So filarial worms cause filariasis. These are a group of worms. Um, they are transmitted by mosquitoes. And there are different um, systems that can be affected. So we have lymphatic system, um, causes elephantiasis, which is what you're seeing here. Um, they can attach the subcutaneous layers. Um, so adults lay under the skin in fat layers, and they can also attach the serous membranes of the abdominal region. Okay. So let's look at um, an example. Here we have Wuchereria bancrofti, which causes um, lymphatic filariasis or elephantiasis. Um, mosquito takes a blood meal from an individual. The larvae enter through the mosquito, from the mosquito into the skin, right? Um, the adults then move into the lymphatic system. The adults produced, uh, produce uh, microfilariae that migrate into the lymph and blood channels. So now we have a bunch of uh, microfilariae that are in your lymphatic system and in your blood. Mosquito takes a blood meal. The microfilariae shed their sheaths, penetrate the mosquito's midgut. Here we have the larval form. Um, they migrate to the head and then they can um, infect another individual. The more worms we have in our lymphatic system, the more likely we're going to have blockages in those vessels. And when you have blockages in the vessels, that's what's going to cause um, the swelling because now, so one of the major functions of the lymphatic system is to pick up excess fluid that did not get reabsorbed by our blood. And so you end up having a lot of extra fluid in those areas. I'm going to stop here. This has been 14 minutes, so this is long enough. And we'll get into our arthropods next. Bye.